Okay, so we're just going to look at how um, wood chips are made. Um, obviously, you can buy them in. Uh, the chips are made in sawmills using counter chippers, uh, or they use chippers when they've removed falling boards where they've got the, uh, the remains of the wood just under the bark, which they can't make usable bits of timber out, so they'll go into chippers and that and they get sold on. And those chips will either go into pulp and paper mills, which is less likely because they get some discoloration as they dry out, they oxidise, uh, and it's then the paper mill has to use more bleach to compensate for that. So the chips from sawmills normally go uh, to particle board mills because they're not too worried about the coloration. But other than that, the particle board mill has to make its own chips. Uh, and to do that, they use a device that is called a chipper, which probably doesn't come as too much of a surprise. And a chipper has uh, a series of knives in it, embedded in it, which I'm not drawing very well, uh, which will cut the wood. The wood log gets fed in with a series of rollers, which have got spikes in to force the log down onto this device that's spinning around at high speed and that will produce primary chips. And the reason that they're called primary chips is because the process is pretty destructive um, and not very easy to control and clearly quite energy consuming. There's an awful lot of energy involved in rotating this large lump of metal which needs to be a large lump, lump of metal to compensate for the fact that the logs are passing down here and being forced against the, this chipper. So the primary chips will then have to go to some sort of secondary conversion. Which I'll talk about in a minute. Okay, so the log itself has to be debarked. And we've already discussed debarking when we were looking at sawmilling operations. Um, debarking is something you have to do to make pulp and paper and it's also something to make particle board because bark's a contaminant. It just soaks up glue, it doesn't do anything uh, and it's aesthetically not very pleasing to have it in and also you can make money out of bark or you can at least burn it to run um, boilers in, in the process plant or something like that. There's energy to be had in bark so it's worth taking off. Um, we've already looked at the operation of rosser heads which grind the wood. Take the bark off using attrition, using these sort of spiked rollers. Um, pretty abrasive, uh, very effective and can handle all kinds of different types of logs, handle dry wood, this sort of thing. It's not really an issue that it damages the wood surface when you're making a uh, particle board. Uh, more of an issue when you're trying to make solid wood products because you'll lose some of that wood surface with a rosser head. You can use cambial shear, of course. And again, these have been discussed with sawmilling. Cambial shear debarkers will take the bark off at the cambial, cambial zone. Um, you really need to have wet wood, wood where it's actively growing so that that cambium um, is a nice sort of loose, uh, flexible layer and you can just take the bark off very, very easily in that case, but not so good with dry logs, not so good with logs of variable shape, that sort of thing. Uh, and then we have something which is called a debarking drum and this is unique to the board industry and the pulp and paper industry. Um, these are pretty large pieces of kit. Uh, they are a very large drum, which is rotated at a relatively low speed. Um, it has a barrier at that end. and It's open this end and it's open that end and it's got loads and loads of slits in it. And basically the logs get fed in this end with a conveyor and they just work their way down the drum and they rub against each other and the residence time in that drum is controlled by obviously the debarking efficiency. As they come out the end of this um, they go over some sort of a, a conveyor system so they fall out the end over the top of this barrier here which is called the dam, a dam. Um, they are lined up in the longitudinal direction using uh, 
guides and basically there is a gap and any log that's shorter than the gap disappears down the gap uh, and the reason that this is done is to make sure the logs are of the correct dimension to go into the next part of the process so um, it's just a question of what can be handled if the sawmill can handle variable shaped logs then it's not an issue but uh, uh, not sawmill the particle board mill but um, if the particle board mill requires logs to be of the dimension a specific dimension if it's set up that way then they need to take these logs out. So basically the logs are rubbing against each other, the bark comes off, it drops through these slots, um, it's collected on a conveyor, it goes off and it will go into the recovery boiler, probably gets dried first and then goes to the recovery boiler. Um, pretty effective. Um, the residence time depends on how wet the logs are. If the logs are fresh, um, they've come from trees that are actively growing, the bark will come off pretty quickly um, so the residence time can be relatively short. In uh, the season where they're not growing um, and when the bark is now pretty well fixed to the tree, they'll have to be in there for a much longer period of time. The longer they're in there, the more chance there is of log damage, log bruising, this sort of thing occurring. Um, and damaged logs represent uh, loss of income. To the particle board mill, these are also used very much in the pulp and paper industry. The beauty of them is, is that they're they don't require a hell of a lot of maintenance really, they, they just rotate, that's all they do. Um, so they haven't got the kind of sophistication of these other types of debarker.